my, my dream is to be able to work with this all the time. Uh, it's the most fantastic job, it's the most fantastic hobby, uh, it's only joy. Welcome to this new video for Hanpan Skule. Uh, my name is Andrea Braggi, I'm from Italy and I am the owner of uh, Hanpan Skule, which is a Hanpan school based in Scandinavia, in uh, Trondheim for now. And uh, I decided to start promoting the Hanpan culture in Norway and Scandinavia because it's not really uh, known, this instrument, in uh, Scandinavia. And uh, to do so, what the Hanpan School does is creating courses and giving courses and classes, as well as sen selling and uh, um, giving handpans on loan. But also, now I started also to think, you know, maybe someone who is expert in the handpan field, is in, which is based in Norway, can also give us some information and contribute to Hanpan School as uh, goals. So I have decided to start this cycle of interviews and the first person I wanted to interview is actually you, Johan. So Johan, first of all, thank you very much for your time. And you. uh, today we're going to speak a little bit uh, about you and about what you do and uh, how you do it, most importantly, in order to transmit some passion to, to the people who are going to see this video. It would be nice if you could tell us how everything started and uh, why. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, there's many parts of the story. Uh, I, uh, I've been playing music since I was 15 years old. Uh, and I was playing very, uh, like, uh, a lot until I was 30. Um, and then after that, I started to be more and more interested in, in uh, building instruments. So it started like a thought. Also in Barcelona, like around uh, in the start of 2000. And I watched the street musician there uh, playing some of the first hand pans existing. Um, and I was really amazed by looking at this instrument. And he was also doing this uh, throat singing together with playing uh, uh, the instrument. And I was really amazed. I was sitting there and watching him for a long time. And I was just, wow, what a cool instrument, you know. After the time, I was starting out to build uh, another instrument, uh, the jaw harp. And that is the one you put in the mouth and play like, like this. I, I went to uh, a Norwegian jaw harp maker and I found him by own will. I was looking around in the mountains to find him and uh, he, he showed me how to do it. And uh, it was a success. I learned how to do it and I sold some and uh, and people were, uh, they admired the instrument that I built and it was a very nice feeling making an instrument that musicians were happy about to play. Um, and uh, so that's the first time I, I got the feeling of making the instrument that comes to a happy player. And uh, that was a very good feeling. But there was uh, also no way of making a living from it because you cannot charge very much for, um, for a jaw harp and it takes very long time to build. So it was a, a bad idea for, for making money on your, uh, on your dream, for example. Later on, I, I saw more and more YouTube videos on the handpan, but I did not play a handpan. And I was looking around for people playing or people making in the clothes or in uh, Scandinavia, and it was really hard to find. It was just love at first sight when you see the handpan. Uh, yeah. You basically start uh, thinking about all the possibilities that this instrument can give you like instantly and you yeah. immediately want to play it because it has such a different uh, feeling Actually, compared to other I instruments. Want to build it. <laughs> I want to build it immediately. <laughs> ah, build it immediately, yeah. that's different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I thought it was going to be a piece of cake for me to do this. <laughs> that was wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Was Actually, the next, the next question is uh, how difficult you find it to make this kind of job? Like, what are the difficulties that you find uh, when you are going to be a maker? There's endless of difficulties. This was the... Many times I thought it was a stupid idea. Many times. During these four years I've been training, I thought uh, many times and I was crying actually to my girlfriend and saying I'm never going to be able to make this and I was almost hitting myself in the head with the hammer and I was 
crashing hand pants because I was so angry because it's never ending obstacles, you know, that I got through this period of, of trying and finally came to a place where I actually is making them and I know what I'm doing, kind of. Which kind of improvements uh, can you state that you have found uh, now after these years that you have been practicing to make your instruments? Yeah, the first improvement is from handpan sounding like shit or nothing. <laughs> to handpan sounding like a handpan, you know? Mm. Uh, but the, the next improvement is that I can control um, the tuning much more. Um, and I can also like more and more control the sound and the tuning. So it, it becomes what I aimed for, you know? So the first hand pens, I was, maybe I, I uh, or I left, I left it at the point where I was not 100% satisfied with the result, but I felt I couldn't go on. Because if I would go on, I would have hit the metal too many times after gluing it, and it would become weak and unstable. So, but I'm not, I'm not looking for perfection in the way that I'm uh, tuning all my hand pens in the same way uh, that they have the same sound or anything like this. I want in individuality to every hand pen because this is the this is the magic about hand pen. I think that every hand pen is their own soul um, and their own sound and their own feeling, vibration, uh, length of notes, um, uh, also how how clear you can hear the overtones um, and the crisp or the softness of the note and everything is different from everyone. And I love to play them, of course. And, uh, and, uh, and while making them, I'm also, uh, of course, uh, getting more to learn how to play them and stuff, but I'm still a lousy handpan player. I take two handpans and make a melody out of it together and stuff like this. But technically, I'm not skilled at all playing handpans. But all my sales now is hand-to-hand, uh, -hand, so I'm always the customer is coming. I never send away a hand fan uh, yet because I, I want to. I want to be more sure that it's uh, like they're perfect. They're perfect um, in a way that can satisfy satisfy anyone. You know. So now I always tell the customer, come try out the different ones, and you find the one that's perfect for you, or if you find you buy it. You know. And they come and they say, oh, this, I really like this, this I want, you know. And then uh, you can see how the, how the customer really tunes in with the instrument and uh, how he really likes it and or she. And uh, that's that's a, the biggest motivation, you know. Uh, first, I was looking for information on YouTube, how to build uh, a handpan. And then I realized that uh, I need some guidance from, from some skilled makers that is already doing good hand pans. And that was kind of hard when I started. Uh, the guys making hand pans at that point were kind of not willing to give away too much information. But um, after a while, I, I got very much information actually from, from skilled makers. Uh, now in the end, I've been also uh, got lots of tips and advices from um, Nick Alfansen, who is making hand pans in Sweden. They all told me, especially the, the famous ones, Yasha and Gambo, they say, yeah, we can give you this information, but it's, it's not going to help if you're not hammer. Nowadays, it's, it's so much information going uh, through maker to maker. You know? oh, that is good, because uh, before, uh, you know, when it was uh, just uh, pan art making the pans, uh, they were like really restricted about their knowledge. And they just yeah. want to like monopolize the whole thing, so no one else was going to make them. But now the the makers at least are communicating, which is, uh, in my opinion, it's uh, producing uh, more knowledge and improving yeah. all the other people which are uh, contributing to the handpans. Yeah, yeah, it's super nice. It's very cool. I've experienced as a, an international person in Norway that uh, things which are new in Norway they get accepted uh, with a little bit of difficulty. It's so easy to like uh, when you are a human, so that really transcends uh, whatever your nationality is, in my opinion. That is a bit the magic that uh, makes the handpan uh, be loved by these people. I'm surprised how many it is. Um, I, I thought that uh, Norway was uh, not a good place to, to uh, start uh, this as a, as a hope of uh, something to live from but I see 
there's a big interest here already. Uh, not not like in Europe where, there, where everyone knows about it, heard about it already. And most people I talk to first about it when I start talking about it, they're like, oh, I didn't know it existed. Uh, but but I I've, uh, through Facebook and through Martino and uh, through uh, Pin, but then uh, I've I've seen that there is quite a lot of persons uh, interested already. And I also see that it's as soon as people are introduced to this, if they're musicians, they want to have one. <laughs> oh, I want that all over.